Welcome to First Time Studios. I've got a TC Electronic Spark, which is a boost pedal. True bypass. Ooh! And I'm going to tell you about it. This is the TC Electronic Spark. It's a boost pedal. I say it's a boost pedal. Um, I don't actually like it as a boost pedal. I think it sounds better as a bit of a drive pedal, but leave a comment. Let me know if you've got one or heard one or tried one and do you think otherwise, or if you know how to use it as a boost pedal. I mean, you turn the gain all the way down, the level all the way up, really. But in fact, let's try that. This, well, let's give you the clean signal. This is how it is going through an Orange Rocker 15 Terra, and we are on natural, so it's nice and clean. Got a TC Electronic Hall of Fame going through the effects loop, um, just so it sounds a bit more sexified. And this is what it sounds like with a spark, everything set to 12 o'clock. Okay, that sounds really nice. <laughs> but that's with gain at 12 o'clock. So if I turn the gain all the way down and the boost all the way up, it is now a boost pedal. Okay, that does sound quite good to be honest. Uh, just compared to my other boost pod puddles, my other boost pedals, I've never been particularly wowed by it uh, on the boost side of things, although that does push it into, you can hear the drive on the amp because it's been pushed. I mean, it's got humbuckers, it's a uh, Les Paul, so they're not the hottest. This is on the neck and it's only about 8K, I think, so it's not the hottest humbucker. And that did push it to drive a little bit. Um, it's got bass and treble controls. Let's chart the treble all the way up. And all the way down. So it definitely does something. And there's bass, let's try that all the way up. not too bad to be honest I'm using it on the mid setting let's try it on clean so gain all the way down boost all the way up because uh, I mean it should really be a boost pedal so okay it doesn't push it to drive at all but it's quite a nice just see how much louder that is then. I mean, it doesn't really boost it at all. If Maybe a tiny amount. I mean, it's obviously a, a little bit louder, but not like you expect from a boost pedal with the level the whole way up. But um, that's on the clean setting. On the fat setting. Well, that, that's a difference. I think my favorite setting is mid for some reason. Or maybe not. That's why it's not on. <laughs> Yeah, the fat setting, setting, the fat setting does make it sound fatter. Uh, I still prefer the mid setting. As a boost pedal, um, I think there are better boost options available. I 
I mean, I've got a few other boost pedals, which I would prefer. I, I quite like the Seymour Duncan one, just because of its simplicity. It's just got a, a massive knob on it. Um, it's like the MXR MC401, um, but a different colour, to be honest. Um, they sound, those two pedals sound really similar. But they just work better as a boost. I think this works better as a gain pedal. So if I, I turn the boost down and turn the gain up, you know, this, this sounds good as its own thing. Sounds really nice as a drive pedal. Uh, obviously, we're going to try the gain on full because why wouldn't you? Might as well put the lot on full, see what happens. Sounds nice, gonna put the amp on the dirty setting. This is how the amp sounds. I'm gonna take the Hall of Fame reverb off just to make it a bit uh, more obvious to hear what's happening, so. Can't really hear the EQ on the pedal doing much uh, with the drive channel on. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I'm going to try it as a boost pedal through the drive channel, so gain all the way down, level all the way up. This is without it. Doesn't really boost much. Um, and may as well try it with everything all the way up. Oh. Thank you. 
Yeah, okay, it sounds better with it on. Um, let's try fat. Yeah, I, it, it is making it sound quite a lot nicer with it on and that's on the fat setting. I'd like to try it again in the effects loop so I'm going to shove it in the back and um, see how that sounds. Give me a second. Right, back in the game. Uh, oh, the reverb's not going to work because I haven't plugged that into the effects loop so <laughs> this is going to sound a bit pony but um, this is how it sounds. an uninspiring sound and with the spark on everything at 12 huh. it boosts a lot more through the effects loop I think the effects loop is definitely the way to go, it boosts it a lot more. Doesn't really push it into proper breakup though still, um, whereas some of the other pedals I have, the boost pedals would definitely do that, especially on humbuckers. Um, but again, I don't think the Spark is the greatest boost pedal, obviously it can boost the signal a bit. I prefer it as a game pedal, like I said about 58 times through this video. So let's put a bit of a bit of gain on. Let's try it on the mid setting, which is my favourite. Let's go dirty. Gain all the way down, level all the way up, just going to give you a comparison so this is just the amp.
yeah, that could definitely take you into solo territory. Uh, might as well try everything on full because it's always a laugh. Before and after. <laughs> Crikey, that was loud. Yeah, so boost pedals. It seems whack them in the effects loop if your amp's got one because it sounds better. Um, I haven't, to be honest, I've never used a boost pedal in the effects loop. Um, I think it comes from the days where I used to gig loads and some amps would have reverb, some wouldn't, some would have effects loop, some wouldn't. And you could never trust what type of gain or distortion you'd get on an amp in a back line. So, I would rather run the amp clean at the volume that felt right and do everything with my pedal board. It's only recently I started running um, reverbs and delays through effects loops because if I gig, I really hope I don't have to gig again. I don't enjoy it really, but I'd probably just take that because um, that's that's nice and small. In fact, I'd probably take that as well to be honest. I know that's a bit of a lump. Or the Boss Katana because you can't really go wrong with a Boss Katana, you're just set to go. Um, so yeah, running boost pedals through the, the effects loop, in my opinion, sounds a lot better than throwing it in the front. So uh, let me know your thoughts. Would you shove it in the front or cram it in the back? So <laughs> let me know your th <laughs> let me know your thoughts. Would you put it in the front or shove it in the back? <laughs> I can't do this. Let me know your thoughts, would you? <laughs> what am I saying? Let me know your thoughts, would you? <laughs> what would you do? Would you put it in the front or shove it in the back? To be honest, I'd shove it in the back because I think it sounds better from behind. Uh, and I think I will. Well, that was a plan anyway. That's why I've got, I was gonna have the Dane in the front end and I was gonna put the Seawall Duncan up the back uh, just for a bit of a bit of dynamics, but I might, whack them both in the back to be honest and see what happens. I've never run a drive pedal through the effects loop. We'll find out what that sounds like in a video soon, no doubt. But yeah, it gives me something to play with. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you thought it all sound ter terrible. Sorry I didn't put reverb uh, through the effects loop, but didn't really think of it to be honest. Um, the TC Spark, probably not the best boost. I mean, it does a job as a boost, but it sounds nice as a game pedal on its own as a drive pedal. So I don't think it should be just thrown in the boost pedal bucket because well I think this about the uh, Ibanez tube screamer I think although everyone uses it as a boost pedal I like it as a drive pedal but I'm a bit weird so who knows thanks for watching like and subscribe tell everyone you know hit the bell then you get notified when there's a the next video just more of me rambling thanks for watching <laughs>